Today I'm gonna to show you how to never, ever run out of Facebook ad ideas. Once we've gone through what we're gonna go through today, which is a four step process to generate winning ads that we literally use for multiple multi-million dollar brands, trust me, your issue will not be, I can't think about ideas. Your issue will be, I've got too many ideas, I don't actually know which ones to execute on. I'm also gonna be showing you how you can do audience research and come up with ideas for ads with ChatGPT, which by the way, most advertisers aren't even using to like 10% of its capabilities, but today for the first time ever, I'm gonna be sharing my full prompt cheat sheet of over 50 prompts uh, that you can use on ChatGPT to consistently pump out winning ads. So let's get started. And I know what you're thinking, Alex, why have you been keeping your stash of marketing related memes away from us for the last 12 months? And to that, I would say great point. I should probably share them more often. Um, but on a serious note, from what I've observed uh, working with multiple eight and nine figure brands, um, winning creative teams have two things dialed in. Number one, the psychology, so actually understanding who their audience or audiences are and uh, taking a pulse on that regularly. Um, and the second part is the operational side, thinking about systems, tracking and actual creative ops and thinking about how they're gonna scale that as they bring more people into their creative team. Today, we're gonna look at this side, the, the psychology side and the more qualitative side. Uh, next week, I'm gonna make a video on uh, creative ops and uh, show you how we scaled a team uh, to produce over a thousand ads every single month. So let's jump into the one sheet. We fill this out for every new brand that comes on board. I would encourage brands to fill it out for themselves. The goal of a document like this is to centralize all the information about a SKU or an audience and just list out everything. So whether you're a creative strategist, whether you're a media buyer, whether you're an editor, you can see everything you need to see and really understand the audience and the personas we're trying to speak to. And the reason that I built this out is that at least from what I've observed, a lot of creative strategists are just basically these script machines. Uh, they go from script to script, brief to brief, send them out. Um, and that's not a bad thing, but like inevitably at some point they will run out of ad formats to test or ideas they've seen on Twitter or LinkedIn. And then they're back to square one. So if we could think about things more like an actual marketer, things like our positioning relative to competitors in the market, you know, the organic content that our customers are consuming, whether that be TikToks, whether that be YouTube Shorts, whether that be articles that are looking at online, really getting into their psyche, that's gonna put us in a position where we're never ever gonna run out of bad ideas. And then at the end of this process, we can put it all together and uh, do a creative brainstorm. But let's start off from the very beginning and think about overall angles. And I'm gonna show you guys a mock-up that we've created for Huel, uh, one of our clients at AdCrate. Um, we're gonna start off by thinking about how do we advertise a daily green drink? So I started off by filling out this with my own knowledge and entering uh, angles that I know work for Huel. Uh, so I put in time and convenience, energy and focus, and uh, weight management. And it's important for us to make the distinction between angles and ad formats. I see people confuse these quite a lot. The angle is the overall way that you are speaking to someone and the ad format is the way in which you package it. So for example, weight management might be the angle, but three reasons why is your ad format. TikTok made me buy as your ad format. And everyone loves to test ad formats, but also what you should be thinking about is how do we test different overall angles? Because that is a bigger creative swing than just trying the same angle with a different ad format. And what you can also do is get GPT to give you some ideas for angles by jumping into this prompt cheat sheet, which is linked in the description below if you wanna download it. Take the ad angles prompt, ask GPT to analyze the whole website and customer reviews. Important when you are getting it to analyze a website, ask it to do the whole website because sometimes I've found that it only analyzes a specific web page when you give it a URL. So that I do that just to be safe. Um, and give me different ad, ad angles to sell this product uh, on a Facebook ad. I've done that for Huel. I've already given it the reviews and the URL above, and it gave me a bunch of different ideas, time and convenience saving, balanced nutrition, taste and varieties. So there's, there's a lot of different ways that we could go about it. Um, I listed some of them uh, on here. I decided to ignore some of them, but like those are the overall angles that will inspire the next part of the process. And then we're just gonna start filling out the sections below. Uh, benefits, pain points, features, objections, failed solutions, and other. Um, and actually what I like to do is I, I, I will split out like what I call supporting evidence into reviews, information, and statistics. Um, this is obviously a mock-up, so, so yours would be a lot more detailed than this. Uh, but, you know, for example, 
if we wanted to mention the benefit of my, uh, enhanced digestion, we would, uh, we've got reference reviews to see how people are communicating and how our customers are talking so that we can tap into the nuances of how they talk about specific benefits and literally use them in static headlines, use them in ad scripts. This makes it very, very easy when we come to the end of, pro the, end of the process, just piece ad scripts together because we can just say, okay, hook, benefit, 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 or like however you want to structure the framework and then you can just pick out reviews or terminology that you've put together through a, um, a system like this. So what I like to do is I start off without customer reviews. I just start off by typing things into, into ChatGPT. So give me some benefits of people who do use fuel. You could even go one step up and you could say, give me some benefits of people who take daily greens or give me some pain points of people who have dandruff, or give me some pain points of people who have menopause. Before you even mention your product, just get overall benefits and pain points that you can start entering into here. And yeah, these are pretty much the uh, the benefits I put in. Um, and then I would do it again with uh, the reviews, uh, do it again with the pain points. Um, I do some audience research in perplexity. If you haven't used perplexity, I would strongly recommend it. Uh, so, Perplexity is a tool like ChatGPT, but it's more weighed towards surveys and research. So I might say, give me uh, benefits of people who take daily greens. And it's gonna give me my answers uh, and it's gonna give me sources. So if I wanna look into these articles, I wanna take out specific lines or quotes or statistics from them, I can go and research them too. I found that ChatGPT is better in conversation uh, and perplexity is better for uh, studies and research. I use a combination of both of them when I'm doing audience research. And here are some of the prompts that I like to give to perplexity. So I will do ChatGPT and perplexity without giving it the product, without giving it the reviews. Then I will feed it both of those things. And I mean, you can literally fill out the whole uh, section here by just saying, using the reviews below, give me details on each of the following for my product. And then I've listed out the, the six sections um, and I've asked it to add supporting reviews under each bullet point. So that's what, how we start to build up the skeleton of something like this. Um, and it really doesn't take a lot of time. And you can start adding your reviews under each one. So uh, now that when we are building our ad scripts, we can reference reviews, we can reference information, we can reference uh, our statistics as well. Then we're gonna go down and uh, generate some personas, uh, demographics, psychographics, and I also like to add in awareness level of different personas, uh, just to be cognizant of where we think our customers are uh, in the awareness levels as per Eugene Sports in Breakthrough Advertising. And I would strongly consider you guys to think about for your customers, not everyone's gonna be in the same awareness level and they're gonna be split between all five of them, very likely, but where are the majority of your audience and how does that affect how you're gonna go about messaging them. And statistics, statistics are great. We use them in a lot of ads, we use them for hooks, we use them for headlines, we use them in scripts. Um, and you can add them in here as well. So, I mean, if I can, yeah, probiotics, probiotics can re reduce bloating by 50%. Um, that could be, uh, you know, did you know that probiotics can, can reduce bloating by 50%? Or you could call it out an ad script, you could make a static headline, like there's so many things you can do. Just ask GPT or Perplexity to give me some shocking statistics about pain point X or benefit Y or whatever. And once you've done this for customer reviews, then you go and do it again for your surveys and then your support tickets. And like, this is before we even got onto like social listening, ad comments and, and uh, Reddit posts and, and core forums, which you 100% should be doing by the way as a creative strategist, because the goal of this is just to listen to your customers and your prospects and work out how they communicate about their pain points, how they communicate about the benefits of your product, what nuances do they use, what words, what phrases, and then you're gonna take that log it inside of here and then sprinkle it back into your message on the front end so that you sound like a consumer talking to a consumer rather than a brand talking to a consumer. So for example, for Huel, I could type in Huel and Reddit. Um, I, I saw this post when I was doing research for this. Um, we can literally copy and paste this. In fact, I'm gonna grab the prompt first. You could, you could read this manually, by the way. There's nothing stopping you to do this manually and look for actual you know, words that you wanna pick out and use in your message and then just logging them straight into the, uh, into the one sheet. Or you can just take a prompt like this and say, analyze this Reddit post, identify keywords and phrases people use when talking about Huel. Use real customer language on the post, identify key language regarding the, and you've got all of the points that we mentioned there. So let's just go and control uh, A, Command A. And I'm just gonna paste. And it's gonna pull out real language uh, that people are using. And now I can go and take some of these reviews and I can just put them straight back into uh, my one sheet. Um, and I can even link the, uh, I'd probably link the Reddit post in here as well. 
uh, at some point. But yeah, so I could look at this information and make ads breaking down uh, the prior objections like taste and texture or like the price, doing a price breakdown or looking at competitors, overnight oats was brought up in uh, in this Reddit post. So there's a, this is just one Reddit post, by the way, there are gonna be thousands on the internet. And if you can't find anything about your brand online, then you can just search for pain points, like how to get rid of dandruff Reddit or like you know how to cure menopause Reddit or look at competitors and see what people are saying about them. You just want to consume all of the content that your target audience are consuming so you can understand what they respond to and how, like what the nuances and how they communicate are so you can relay that back to them in your messaging. So once you've done that for your ad comments, for forums online, looking at articles and breaking them down with the chat GPT prompts, then we're going to move on to some organic research. And organic is a great place to get inspiration for ad concepts because even though it doesn't necessarily mean because something's works on organic that it will work on paid, if you have a piece of content that has gone viral or done well, talking about your audience's problems or their pain points or the benefits of your solution, then that is not an insignificant piece of information. And in many cases, we have taken hooks or clips or visuals or even whole concepts that have performed well on organic, recreated them for paid and just slotted our clients uh, solution into there and they've gone on to become top performing ads inside the ad account. So I like to do this on TikTok and uh, YouTube Shorts. I just typed Huel into TikTok and already, I mean like 39,000 views of a guy just talking about his weight loss transformation. Weight management was one of the angles for Huel. And um, we could literally have like an organic video of someone talking about their transform, their transformation with Huel with something like this um, and turn that into an ad. YouTube Shorts is also a great place to find organic inspiration. So this guy's standing in front of some of the greens powders in the store. I just typed in greens powders and like I could type in a bunch of different searches here. I could I could look for like adaptogens. I could look for superfoods, greens powders, uh, plant-based protein to see if we can find any organic inspiration of things that have already done well that we can take because something in that video uh, has captured the attention and kept the attention of people in our target audience. So there's something that we can learn from that. And this is why I say you should never run out of ad ideas because between your customer reviews and surveys and your support tickets and looking at ad comments and looking at forums online and I'm looking at articles, like there are millions and millions of ideas and that's before you even look at TikTok and YouTube shorts. And these things are gonna keep on coming in. So over time, you're gonna be able to do more and more research, come up with more and more ideas. And that's before we've even looked at the data inside the ad account. You really should never be in a position if you've done this exercise properly where you're struggling as to where you're gonna come up with your next ad idea for. The question should just be, I've got all of these ad ideas, which ones are realistic and would we have the highest confidence in if we go and actually execute on? So what we're gonna do now once we've filled out this section is we're gonna come down to competitor research and we're effectively going to do the same exercise for our competitors, except this time we're looking for things that customers are dissatisfied with competitors so we can position ourselves as the solution to this um, in our messaging. And we've got our prompts here uh, to do this. Just find a few competitors, uh, add them into your chat GPT prompts and ask it to analyze the similarities and difference between them and in this case, Huel, which is what I've done. I found Jimmy Joy um, and AG1, which are two big competitors for Huel, and GPT has given me some similarities, some differences, and most importantly, opportunities. Where can we pick up on things that uh, customers are not happy with uh, the competition. And that's what you get from this competitor gap analysis prompt. So what I found when I did this for Huel was after looking at some of their biggest competitors, AG1 being the biggest one, um, price uh, was a big sticking point for a lot of people with AG1. And this is backed up by comparison articles I've seen between AG1 and Huel. So that might be something we want to lead into an ad concept. Um, taste and palatability came up in all three competitors. So if that's something that people are saying a lot about our product, that the taste is good, and that's something they can really lean into because if people have tried these failed solutions before, AG1, Overnight Oats, Soylent, Jimmy Joy, we can really lean into this and say like, you know, people are saying how good the, the taste is for Huel or like the only the only daily green drink that actually tastes nice, or the only all-in-one meal replacement that actually tastes good, like could be an angle uh, that we could um, lean into. Uh, taste and texture again, digestive issues, maybe something if you want to target with people with slightly uh, more specific uh, issues on the pain point side. Um, but yeah, really what we're looking for here is what are people not happy with with other companies and how can we lead into that in our messaging? Uh, and it's a, it's a position play. It makes you think about where we want to position ourselves relative to competitors in the market, which is why it's very important to complete this exercise, not just for you, 
but also for your competitors as well. So that's competitor research. And I've put some prompting questions down the bottom here to make you think when you're doing this analysis, uh, thinking about quality, thinking about price, uh, what would make you the best choice above the competitors that we've got. And then looking into their ad libraries, like how are they approaching formats and strategies and creators? What kind of creators they're using? Are they using older creators, younger creators? They're using a mixture of creators in their ads. They're using just single creators in their ads. I don't think you can learn too much from their ad libraries. I personally wouldn't take direct uh, inspiration from a direct competitor because you don't know if an ad is working or not. And even if it does, you're gonna be one step behind them if you're just copying them. Um, but you can evaluate what they're doing with their strategy and then use that uh, when you're thinking about how you're gonna position yourself against them um, in your ad strategy. So that's the qualitative side of how we understand our audience. Now, the other side of that is actually looking back at quantitative data inside the ad accounts and working out what has worked and has not worked. And for me, what I like to do uh, when I come on board a new brand is do an ad account audit that looks something like this. So I have this uh, spreadsheet template that I just hand to a VA and I get them to uh, pull all of the ads from the last, say, 12 months that we've launched or the last six months, depending on how much ad creative that you launched previous, previously inside the ad account. Pull all the data, uh, pull the ad links, pull the landing page that it was tested to, uh, all the spend, CPA, hook rate, hold rate, like this data can all be very easily input. Um, and then I like to break it down by different variables. So uh, what angle of all the angles that we decided uh, was it? Um, what ad format was it? Was it a testimonial? Was it a podcast? Three reasons why, like all the ad formats we've tested. What emotion were we trying to elicit with that ad? What framework, like what advertising framework did the structure of the brief um, follow? You don't have to enter all of these. And, and honestly, you can you can just transcribe the ads using like the script or something and then put them into ChatGBC and get it to answer these questions for you. And then you can break up this data however you want. Like you can see the performance by angle. You might find that like for whatever reason, we've got more scale and more spend when we talk about energy and focus or digestive health or when we use this ad format or when we elicit this emotion or when we use this framework because you know we have other sides that our audience is like X you know, awareness level. Sometimes you get some really interesting insights from this and sometimes you don't. I just like to have all of the data in front of me so that I can chop it up however I want and get all of these different insights. And just anecdotally from working on over 50 accounts, uh, spending on the low end 50K a month on the high end, like multiple, multiple millions a month over the last few years, there are just certain accounts where certain types of ads work. Like we've got accounts where statics are the best performers. We've got accounts where like only high production works, only UGC works. Um, and sometimes when you do a so like this, you can look back historically on the account to see what has worked and what has not worked. And then you can use that to inform how you're gonna go about your ad strategy. The obviously the massive, massive caveat with this is that you don't know what you don't know. So especially if you don't have a lot of data to look back on, I would index less on this kind of insight. Uh, and you will not know if you haven't tested something, it will not show in this data. So that's why it's important to have a good mixture of the qualitative stuff and the quantitative stuff. So you can kind of look at both sides and form an opinion on how you wanna go about things. But I always like to get a, a VA to go and complete this. Uh, it's very useful information to me. And sometimes it helps us shortcut uh, the learnings that we've got from an account just by looking back, especially if we've got coming onto accounts where uh, there is a lot of data for us to break down. I think it'd be naive not to. And what I also like to do is just add an age, gender, and placement breakdown over the last 90 days, six months, 12 months, whatever you wanna do, just so anyone who's looking at this sheet can, can be aware of like how these ads are actually being delivered or how the previous ads have been delivered. So we can think about that when we're sourcing creators uh, going forward. And then just to tie everything together, we've got section four, which is the creative brainstorm, which we'll, we'll go ahead and, and come up with ideas for concepts, hooks, and visuals based on the research we've done in the first three sections of this uh, document. And you should, if you've done this right, just, start, just be able to start spitballing hooks, visuals, um, and, and concept ideas from all of these sources that we've, uh, that we've spoken about already. I also think it's great to like once in a while get all the team on a creative brainstorm, whether that be you know your marketing director, your creative strategist, your video editor, your media buyer, like get the whole creative team on a call like this, go through the sheet together and start brainstorming you know, concepts, hooks, visuals, and basically tear everything back and say like, if budget or production were no limit, like what are some of the craziest ideas that we can come up with? And then you can work backwards to see which ones actually make sense to go and make. Oftentimes like people get into a little bit of a habit and a routine with their creative and they just end up putting out creative that feels very much, very same-ish. Uh, I do think there's definitely merit to stepping back and like for 10% of your time, just dedicating it to crazy, crazy ideas 
and most of them will tank, but then sometimes some of them will do really, really well. So taking this sheet, consolidating it into concepts, hooks, and visuals, and then you decide out of this massive brainstorm, which ones you're actually gonna take into production and go and execute on, and then how you're gonna go about tracking that, which is what next week's video is on. So make sure you're subscribed, because uh, we will be talking about exactly how to put this stuff into place so that you can learn from the data inside the ad account and then feed that back into your strategy. And it's important to note that this should be a continuous process. Like you should be constantly looking for new reviews that are coming in, new surveys, new support tickets, reading your ad comments, looking online at different Reddit posts, core forums, all that stuff. More information is always gonna be coming in. And if you dedicate time to doing ongoing research, like there is no way that you can ever run out of ad ideas. That being said, I hope you found this video valuable. This is literally the process that I use when I'm doing creative strategy for brands. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the prompt cheat sheet in the description below. So if you wanna download it, go and check that out. Uh, if you like this video, like the video, comment below what you wanna see more. And um, yeah, I'll see you on the next one.